Hey everybody, welcome back to another Creator tutorial. Today we're going to go over the palette docker in Krita. I didn't realize I didn't have a video dedicated to just the palette docker, and the old one, I believe, is extremely old. So we're going to go over what that is, looks like now and how to use it. So, as always, go to Settings, Dockers, and Palette. So as you can see, I have removed it from the dockers over here and I'm letting it float so we can see this a little bit easier. Oops, here we go. So as you can see, I have a ton of empty boxes here. I have a group in here. I have one color square. There's, there's a lot going on. It's a little empty. So we're going to start with the simple stuff. We're going to go down to the bottom left hand corner and click on this uh, colored square. And we're going to see a ton of different palettes that we can use, we can open, we can mess with. So I'm just going to open the default one. As you can see, all these squares are now filled in with a bunch of colors. And down here, I have a list of the colors by name and description. So if I want a specific gray, like I want 20% gray. Okay, well, there it is. Where's the 100%? Well, that's black or that's white. <laughs> so there's really no 100% gray, but you can see I have some options to pick from. Now we can make our own palette to actually mimic this too. So before we get into making your own palette, let's go over some of these other options here. If we click on this plus icon, we can add a new color swatch. So for this new color swatch, we can change the color ourselves by either picking a color that's predefined here in a pre-existing palette. We can put the channels in here. We can do uh, the HSV values, hue, saturation, and value. We can just pick a random color from the color wheel, or we can eye drop something that's already in the image that we have. We can also put in the hex code, which is a six digit code that's often used for uh, websites and things like that. So there are a number of ways you can pick a color to put that in the palette with this, choose it, um, with this button. So we're just gonna cancel that because I don't need to do that right now. And after you pick a color, you can change the color name. So if I want to say this is, we'll say marine blue. This is not marine blue, but you get the idea. We can do that. Or if this color, particular blue is being used for something very specific in your work, we can say the website background. We'll say DG for short. The swatch ID is how many swatches there are. So this currently has 120. By making it a swatch ID, swatch ID 121, it's going to be the 121st swatch and we can change it to be a spot color if we need to that is i believe a printing um, option i don't need to do that so i want to leave that off i'm just going to hit cancel to, so we can move on to the next part all right so we're going to click on this orange or as it's been labeled orange red we're going to click on this little pencil icon this is where we can edit it. So as you can see, instead of the um, information that we saw before, we can see the information right now as it was when this, when this palette was made. So it has its own unique name. Now, if we wanted to, we can change this. Uh, we can just change it to blue and okay. And say that if we wanted to, if you want to say the orange red is actually blue, but we, we're not gonna do that. That's really useful if you are changing a color palette that you have set aside and you realize, you know what, this website palette needs that orange to be less orange and more red or more yellow depending on your needs. So we're gonna hit cancel. So anytime you make a change to the palette that you're in, which I'll go over and how that looks a little bit later, you can save it. So make sure if you make a new palette and you're changing some pre-existing colors, make sure to save that. And I'll show you again, like I said, how that's going to work when we make our new custom palette. And here is the palette editor. This is where we can change everything about that palette. We can change the name, we can change the number of columns for swatches. Uh, storage location is grayed out regardless of what I do, so I don't think that's active in Krita at this time. And swatch groups, and how many rows we would like in that swatch group. I will go over what that does when we make our new palette. So we're going to just hit cancel on that. And now we're going to go and make our new palette. 
So to make a new palette, we're going to go to that bottom left hand color square. We're going to click on it. So we have a ton of stuff here already, but we want to make a new one. So before we make a new one, we have to decide if we also want to assign that a tag. So if we want to say this palette is going to be used for environments only, we can make a new tag. So we're going to say environment and we're just going to add that. So now when we go to tags, we have all, all untagged and environment. And now we're going to make our new palette and we're going to label this environment. We can save the palette in the current document or we can just save it in Krita as a whole. I'm going to make this accessible throughout Krita regardless of when I have that document open. So I'm going to say okay. And now we have a very empty palette. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some colors from this background. We're just going to plop them in here. So you can see as I click on that square, it's automatically giving me that orange color that I have currently active in my color selector. We can change that. So we can delete that little palette or little color by hitting the trash can icon and we can start using the eyedropper. So we have that color, click it, click, and we're just going to kind of add a couple of these different shades of green here. All right, so now we have a couple of these greens. Oops. I'm just gonna click on my selector so we don't accidentally select anything. I'm gonna select on the first green and we can actually do something interesting too. We can right click, we can edit that swatch by right clicking or we can remove it. So if you don't wanna accidentally add anything to the palette like this here, you can just remove those swatches and this allows you to remove that specific swatch and make sure you have it selected accurately. As you can see, selecting these squares now, that color is not being replaced by anything. But when I go to click on a new square and it's empty, it is. And if you looked at the drop down menu, you can see all of these colors that we just made are going in order of how we added them in that row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they're just given names of color one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can always go back and edit that. So we can go and click on this. We can hit the edit icon. We can say green tree. We can hit okay. Or we can right click on it, edit the swatch or group, and say green tree light. I don't actually remember if that was a tree <laughs> swatch, but that's fine. And you can see how that would be helpful. So if you're doing a lot of different shading for a character and you want to say this color, it will always be used for the shading or the shadow. And then this color will always be used for the highlight. You can, you can name that as well. So now that we have some colors now, we want to start kind of define this a little bit better. Let's say we want to add the colors for the trees in here, but we don't want to make it all mixed up. Well, we can go to the edit current palette and add a swatch group and we can name this trees. And the number of rows to the swatches in the group. I don't need 20 rows. I'm actually just going to make this two rows. That should be more than enough. And if I wanted to, I could rename that selected group or I could remove it if I no longer want that group in the palette. And I can still go back and change how many rows of swatches that are going to be in that group, just like I could for the entirety of the palette. Now we can go back and see that our new group has been made in the palette, Label Trees. So if I want to go and start eyedropping some of these colors for the tree, I can add that here without it getting mixed up with any other environment colors. So I want to click, or first I'm going to take my eyedrop tool, I'm going to just kind of eyedrop this brown, and I'm going to place it here and do the same thing that I did with the environments. Alright, so I have a couple colors down, as you can see. Now you notice that this is 11 and this is 10. This is because I, I dropped this one, or I added that color first before this one. To reposition them, we can just click and drag it over, and now it's going to be in the right order. So if you ever are messing with your palette and you accidentally drag it 
all the way over here. And you're like, oh no, it's okay. You can just click and drag it back. And if you want to change the title quickly and easily without going through all of these settings, and you're like, okay, this is the tree palette, but this is a very specific tree palette. Maybe you're doing some fantasy tree that's multiple colors and it's not traditional browns. You can double click on that and quickly rename that to Mystical Tree. And there you go. That way you don't have to open up this giant palette editor, click on that group, and then edit that. Just a quick and easy way to do it. So we've done all this work to our new environment palette, and I mentioned earlier that we need to save it. So down in the left hand corner, you can see that the name has changed. There's an asterisk and it's italicized. If we go to save that, now it's back normal. It's no longer italicized, there's no asterisk, and that's how you can tell if your palette's been saved with the change you made or not. So if I go back and I want to edit this color here, I'm just gonna say mystical. I'll make this like a bluish purple. Uh, go. Hit OK. Alright, I added a new variation of a tree color for this mystical tree that we're making. And you can see down here that change has not been saved to that palette. So we're going to save that. And now it will always be associated with that palette and with that group. Okay, so let's say you want to share this palette with someone else that maybe needs this exact color, these exact color swatches and it would be a pain to go and grab the actual RGB values or color names or whatever you want to give them versus just giving them the palette if they have created as well. So to do this, we're actually going to do something a little different. These import and export options don't quite work the way I would like them to. So we're going to do this by making a bundle. We're going to go to manage resources. And we're going to create a bundle. You're going to name this whatever you want. You can put a description in there. If you need to put your email in there, you can put your email in there. Give it a unique icon. Whatever you'd like to do. We're going to go to the type and go to palettes. We're going to put the oh, where'd it go? environment in there by clicking this icon here. And this will be part of the bundle. I'm going to name this environment. And we're going to find a place to save it. So in this case, I'm going to put it in my Creative Bundles folder. I've already done that, but it doesn't show up. But this is where you would do it. So you would just click that and select folder. And that's where it's going to be saved. You can see that down here. And then you just hit save. I'm going to cancel that because I've already done it. And I'm going to close this. To make sure that it is doing what it should be and to demonstrate how that imports, we're actually going to delete this whole environment palette we just made by clicking on that trash icon. So now it's gone. It's no longer is visible or exists. You can even see it's in alphabetical order. E comes after D. There's no environment there. Very nice. Now we're going to go to settings, manage resource libraries, and we're going to import. That palette that I just exported, which is right here, we're going to hit open. We're going to click on it, and by default it activates. I have no icon for it, so it just looks red. That's fine. That's normal. I don't give icons to half the things I make. It's just how I am. And we can close that. Now we go down to our palette, and it's there. It's like magic. And that's how you can import and export your bundle, or I'm sorry, your palette. And the bundle is going to be the easiest way. And if you don't need that anymore, you can just go back up to manage resource libraries, click on that and deactivate it, and it will be removed from the palette set. So as you, see, you can see it's gone again. And if you need it again, just click on it and activate it. And then it will show back up. And that is it for the palette docker. Hopefully this video was helpful to you and you were able to learn a lot uh, about this palette docker and how to use it effectively and make your life easier. It is much different than it used to be, much easier to set up and manage, and much easier to share across your friend group or whatever it is you're doing. So everyone has the same access to the same colors. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. 
Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next tutorial or video, and I will see you in the next one.